Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be trying out some new makeup, some new releases. I have some stuff that I got from Sephora and a few other random things I've picked up over the last few weeks and have not had a chance to try yet. We have the new Hourglass Skin Tint, the new Makeup Forever Concealer, new blushes from Give, and some other things too. So that's what we're going to be doing today. If you're new here, my name is Blair. I do all kinds of beauty and makeup content here on YouTube three times a week on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I hope you'll subscribe and let's get into it. All right, have my most of my stuff in my Sephora bag. So these are going to be first impressions. I have not tried any of these things before. Typically, I do my under eye corrector before I do a base product, but I think I'm going to skip that since we're trying a new concealer. I kind of want to save corrector to do with that. So let's just go ahead and go in with this. So this is the new Hourglass Hydrating Skin Tint. I kind of went back and forth on if I was going to buy this or not. I like Hourglass a lot, um, but it, this is an expensive skin tint. It's $49, and uh, yeah, it's expensive. I'm sure you've probably seen this product all over. I feel like my social media in general has kind of been flooded with this product, so I'm excited to try it. It is a really pretty bottle or tube, I guess, that this comes in. I got the shade number five. First thing I wanted to say about this is it comes in 18 shades, which is decent. It's not the best, um, but since it is a skin tint, it doesn't, I guess you don't need a, as big of a variety of shades as you do on a foundation, but I don't feel like I have a perfect color in this product. I was kind of back and forth between a few, and I kind of have that issue with Hourglass in general. I feel like a lot of their products, the shade range is not the best in my opinion. I went with shade number five, but I don't, I don't think it's gonna be like a perfect match, but we'll see. So this claims to be light coverage, hydrating, radiant, and long wearing. A lightweight skin tint that boosts moisture levels by 52% for a dewy glow and provides a sheer veil of coverage for comfortable all day wear. It has some skincare ingredients in it I won't spend a ton of time on, but it's basically hyaluronic acid, which is very common nowadays in makeup products. It also has squalane in it, which is a really nice hydrating ingredient. But let's just get this on. I did obviously swatch a bunch of them on my hand when I was in Sephora. And this is a thicker skin tint. This is not a runny consistency. It's, it's very much a thicker product, which is kind of interesting. So this is shade number five. So yeah, it looks really yellow. Um, but shade six looked really really pink all right i just realized i have an hourglass foundation brush this is the it doesn't have a name on it i think this is the one that came out with their vanish foundation typically i dot things on but i'm just gonna get it on the brush and go in this way so yeah you can see the consistency on this very thick. It's not, um, I feel like a lot of times when you think of a skin tint, you think of like a really thin, almost watery kind of product. That is definitely not this. So there it is on one side of my face, nothing over here. So you can see it is very, very, very light coverage, not much coverage at all, which it doesn't claim to have a lot of coverage. I think they refer to it as a veil of color on your skin, and that's exactly what this looks like. It's very, very dewy, very good. Well, I don't know that I would say dewy. I would say it looks like how your skin looks when you've just freshly applied your skincare routine. That's kind of how this looks. So I do have more redness on this side, so I do want to see how it applies over here. So I'm going to get what's left on the back of my hand and just go in and apply this. So 
All right, so here it is applied all over my face. The color is actually not bad. I don't think it's like the most perfect color in the world, but I definitely don't think it's horrible. So this is what it looks like. So as you can see, I mean, this is just true light coverage. I don't see you getting anywhere close to medium coverage with this. So your skin is definitely gonna show through. If you have a lot that you are wanting to cover, I would say if you want to try this product, you're gonna want a fuller coverage concealer and just spot conceal with that where you need it. Unless you like a full coverage all over your face, then I would say definitely skip this. Um, for me personally, I like a lighter weight base product with a more medium to full coverage concealer where I need it. That's like my preferred uh, like way of applying makeup personally, but I know that doesn't work for some people. It does for others, but I mean, it's a beautiful, but you can still see my skin very much through it. It just looks a little bit more even in tone. And I mean, truly the finish on this looks like my skin looked before I put anything on. So the finish is very, very, very skin-like, which I think a lot of people are really gonna like. I think it has set a little bit for sure. It doesn't look quite as dewy on my skin, but I still have that hydrated look for sure. Just not quite as much as when I first applied it. But I mean, it looks beautiful. It truly looks undetectable on your skin. I can see where if you have really dry skin or if you have uh, more mature skin, I think this is probably gonna be something you would really like most likely. If you have super oily skin, I don't know. It's very plump is how I would describe my skin right now. It looks very plump and just supple. Those are kind of the words that I'm thinking of. Not so much, I keep saying dewy, but it's not even really dewy, it's just very plump. Let's move on to concealer. I went back and forth on this one too, but I did get the new Makeup Forever HD concealer. Honestly, this was not the color that I wanted in this concealer. I'm gonna go on just a little short rant for a moment on something that really, really annoys me. And let me know if you have this experience, but I find a lot of the times when new products launch at Sephora, typically, you know, you see it on Instagram, you know, it's coming, it will say available at Sephora and Sephora.com on this day, or it'll say available on Sephora or on the app this day, and then in store this day, it will kind of say one way or the other. Well, the Sephora that is most near me every time and i mean every single time i go there looking for a new product i.e this on the day it says it is in store it even says that you can buy online and pick up in store and it's in stock when i go to that sephora it is not there either they don't have the display at all or like this concealer they had the display out there in the front it had one concealer shade. The rest were empty. I went to the Makeup Forever section, same thing. The display was there, they had one shade, the rest is empty. And then when you ask, they act like they're annoyed that you are asking for a product that's supposed to be out. And they even have the display sitting there with no product on it and tell you that they don't have it. They have it. They have it. I don't believe it. I'm sorry, but I don't believe it. They just aren't putting it out for whatever reason. Anyway, that's what happened to me with this concealer. I go there. This was the only shade that was close to the one I wanted. I wanted 1.5. This is 1.3. So I don't know. We, we will see if it works. So sorry to go on that rant there, but that annoys me to no end. When I go there for a specific product, on the day or a day after, it has launched in store at Sephora and they don't, ha they don't have it. Typically, I do corrector under my concealer. I'm gonna do that on one eye and not on the other. So I'm gonna do a little bit of the Huda Beauty corrector on this side in pink pomelo. All right, and I'm just gonna lightly tap that in under my eyes. 
I am not a huge fan of the HD foundation, which is one of the reasons why I was not sure I was going to buy this. I also was not a fan of the original HD concealer from Makeup Forever, even though based on swatching this product already, it, um, it feels nothing like the original HD at all. I don't know, and I don't know about this shade either, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna go with it. So this is what packaging looks like. It looks like uh, the foundation, but just in a concealer package, which is cute. And this is shade 1.3 neutral. So it says this is a smooth and blur undetectable under eye concealer. Natural finish, hydrating, medium coverage. Undetectable real skin finish with up to 24 hours of wear. Okay. It feels, I don't know if it will come off on the swatch there, but it feels extremely like extremely thin and sheer. So let's try it out. We'll do this side first, which is the one that I just applied. Oh yeah, that's light. This is the one I applied corrector with. All right, I let it kind of sit under my eyes for about a minute. And now I'm using a Sigma FO3 brush to blend this in. So there it is on my left eye. I have nothing under this eye. Okay, I agree with the claim that it looks undetectable. I mean, it looks like essentially nothing under my eyes, but I also think it's not doing a whole, whole lot in terms of anything else. I don't see any blurring qualities that they talk about. I don't see any of that. And it's very little coverage at this point. This is light coverage for sure. Cause remember I have a color corrector on underneath this. Let's add a little bit more. Definitely feels really hydrating, almost like an eye cream would. Maybe added just a tiny bit more coverage. I still wouldn't call this true medium coverage. I would say it's a light medium at this point. Now let's go in on the other eye where I have no corrector, which is not what I ever do at all, but for you, I will try it. I wanna say that they describe this shade as a light shade, like not, maybe they do describe it as fair, I can't remember, but to me, this is definitely a fair shade because I'm typically a light skin tone and this, looks really light to be considered a light shade. So this eye has corrector, this eye just has the concealer. I don't think I love this concealer, you guys. Um, I mean, it, it. I totally agree with the undetectable aspect. I just feel like at that, co the cost of that is you're not getting much of anything, which is unfortunate with a concealer, you kind of, want it to do something under the eyes. I mean, it's not terrible, but I definitely don't love it. Also, something weird is happening on this side of my face. It's like pilling right here. I think it's from the concealer because I did kind of drag the concealer down a little bit and I did not have that happen. I didn't have any pilling before I applied concealer. So I don't, I think it's the concealer that's causing that. But the weird thing is I'm not having it over here, but I didn't pull the concealer down as far on this side. So I think that is probably the culprit. All right, I'm gonna try to add a little bit more of the skin tint over here because trying to fix the pilling definitely just pulled up almost all the skin tint right there. Okay, so I reapplied the skin tint over here and it, seem to kind of pick up most of the pilling. So I think the culprit for the for the pilling is the concealer, unfortunately. I will say the concealer is sitting nicely under my eyes. It's not looking very creasy or it doesn't look like it's moving around at all. I definitely don't love the color. I wish I had gotten the shade that I wanted to get, but it doesn't look bad. And again, the skin tint is pretty, but not a lot of coverage. So. I have a new blush that I wanna try and 
based on this level of coverage, it's gonna screw up the blush <laughs> that I wanna use. So I am gonna go in with a little bit of concealer because this is not enough. And I'm not gonna take that Makeup Forever concealer anywhere else because clearly something is not working well with it. I'm gonna take some of my trusty NARS Soft Matte Concealer and just add a little bit of this like very, very lightly to my face right here because I need a little bit more than that. You know what would be beautiful with this Hourglass skin tint is the Hourglass Concealer, which I have, but I don't have a shade that matches like my skin tone right now. The shade Cedar from Hourglass is a fantastic shade match for me. I kind of wish I had that to use with this because I have a feeling it would be really nice with this. But this is my favorite thing to do with this NARS concealer, honestly, is just to get just a little bit more coverage in an area where I need it. Like I'm barely using anything at all, like one tap. We still have a little bit of something happening over here. I. I don't know what it is because nothing weird looks like it's happening on this side. It's all over here, so I don't know. All right, I turn the brightness down a little bit so you can see maybe a little bit better. I don't know if the pilling will show up on camera, but something weird is definitely happening on this side of my face. I don't know. All right, I do have a new blush to try, but I don't have a new bronzer or a new powder. And the blush is powder. It's the new Give blush, the Feel and Cheeky Amplifying Blush Duo. So I am going to first set my face with some powder, just so hopefully the blush will apply okay. And I'm just lightly setting my face with the Kosas Cloud Set Powder. Also, I feel like this Hourglass skin tint is probably something you're going to want to set because it does look like it has set down slightly, but not a ton. So I'm going to add just a light bit of this powder. I'm going to take a little bit of powder bronzer. This is not new, um, but this is the one that I have out. So this is the Pat McGrath bronzer in Nude Honey. So I'm gonna apply a bit of this, and then we'll go in with the blushes. For blush, we're gonna try the new Give Feelin' Cheeky Amplifying Blush Duo. I had a really hard time picking a shade in these. A lot of them are, actually all of them are really pretty. I wanted to pick something a little bit different than what I normally pick, so I went with the shade Stars Aligned. There was, um, on the display, there was a picture of Gwen Stefani, and it said that she was wearing this color, and it looked beautiful on her, so. This one is a little bit more pink, but more of like a peachy pink, which is not what I go for all the time. So you get, I will say the, sh the swatches on these felt really, really nice to me. Like they swatch really nice and buttery. So that is the matte or more of a satin blush. And then I think they actually call the other one a highlight. So there it is. But aren't those colors pretty? I just thought those were really nice, kind of pretty neutral peach colors. So I went with this one, but there were a few that I was kind of going between. Of course, I kind of wanted the really pretty, like, bright pink, but I feel like I have so many of those. I really don't need, I don't need any more, you know? Okay, I'm going to go in with an A22 from Morphe, and I'm going to go into this side. So the more satin finish, there's a lot of kick up in the pan which that doesn't really bother me, but just FYI. It's a pretty color. It's almost like a sunburnt color. Okay, so I feel like they're definitely way more pigmented than I thought 
because I feel like I tapped off my brush quite a bit and I still feel like I got a lot of pigment there but the color is pretty I don't know I feel like this whole video I'm like I don't know I don't know if I like love it but let's use a little bit of this side so this side is actually a little bit of a deep, uh, lighter color it's a little bit more of a pink whereas that blush we just used is a little bit more warm bronzy I guess so I'm gonna take a little bit of the this color here and I'm just gonna apply this lightly kind of like right at the top of my cheek because this one is a little bit glowier kind of like a highlight you all have to let me know what you think I'm not sure I think the under eyes are definitely throwing me off I'm gonna go over it with a sponge and try to like tone it down a little bit I need to pair this with something that I've used a bunch of times though but this isn't bad but I'm not just blown away by it initially I don't have any new brow products so I'm gonna do my brows quickly off camera because that's kind of boring and then I'll come back and we have a few eye products to try okay I did my brows and then I did just a little bit of my MAC paint pot on my eyes and I want to use this little palette from NARS this is their quad in Laguna I actually bought this a while ago and I have not used it yet and I really like NARS eyeshadows so I bought this little quad. It's like four really pretty neutral eyeshadows. I'll insert swatches of them here so you can see. It's a very Blair-esque quad. I'm gonna go into this shade here, which is just kind of a matte medium brown. And I'm gonna apply this as my crease color. I'm going to take this gold right here, it's kind of a metallic gold, and I'm just going to use my finger and put that on my lid. I'm going to go into the darkest bronzy shade right here. I'm not sure how well this will work with a brush, because it's a bit of a metallic shade, but... Oh, it's actually picking up fine with a brush. Add a little bit of that in the outer corner. Yeah, I feel like NARS eyeshadows are definitely underrated. Then I'm going to use this sparkly shade. This shade here, it kind of looks like a top coat kind of shade. And oh yeah. I'm going to tap that in the center of the lid. I feel like this is like the easiest, perfect foreshadow eye look that just all go together really, really well. I'm going to mix the matte shade and that like bronzier shade. Just like a little bit of each. Put that on the lower lash line. I think that's it for shadow. That took like no time at all. I did that in like two minutes. So love that. They applied well. They look beautiful. I mean, obviously it's just a quad, neutral quad of eyeshadows, but you know me and that's what I use. So I really like that. I'm going to take a little bit of eyeliner. I'm just using Makeup by Mario liner in soft brown. All right, finally for the lips, I did get a new lip liner from Sephora Collection. So this is the Gel Rouge Gel Lip Liner in the shade Sink or Suede. I was seeing a lot of people talk about this color in particular, about it being a really good, like, your lips but better color. Yeah, I can definitely see this as being like a contouring color. If your lips are more like of a mauve -y 
undertone, which mine are, this color is really, really pretty. Okay, I definitely agree with that color. I feel like it kind of gives you that more plump effect if your natural lip color is kind of more on the mauve side, which mine definitely is. This color is nice. And these, I've tried these lip liners before, the Sephora collection ones, and they're really nice. I never found a color that I loved, but I like this. And then one final product. I have one of the Dior Lip Maximizers, the reformulated version in the shade Rose Nude. So this is one of the new shades that they released when they redid these glosses. These glosses I've been talking about for a very long time. They're one of my favorites. Very just plumping, but not in a bad way. But they do have a little bit of a tingly feeling to them. But this is number, or this is Rosy Nude. Mm. Oh gosh, yeah, that's like the perfect color with that liner. Oh my gosh, those two are like a match made in heaven. Love that. The gloss feels like the original. I feel like I don't notice as much plumping though. The other one had like a very noticeable tingly feeling. I feel like I'm not getting that with this one. I kind of liked that. I hope, I wonder if they removed it when they redid or they reformulated their products. That kind of makes me sad, but I love the color. All right, so this is the finished makeup look. I feel like I have a lot of I'm not sure's in this video, but I will start. I'll start with the two things I know I really like. Lip combo, love. Love. I am starting to feel a little bit more of the tingly feeling now from that Dior gloss. It just didn't happen as quickly as I remember from the original formula, but I can kind of feel it now, but love that. This little eye palette, did I need this? Absolutely not. Is that going to stop me from buying another neutral palette? Absolutely not. Uh, yeah, this is such like a good one and just, I mean, this eye look took me like no time, two, three minutes at the most. And I feel like it looks like I spent a little bit more time on it than that. So that is a win for me. Perfect little palette to travel with. I'm actually going to the beach next week. And I'm probably just going to take this little palette with me because I, I just love this. Perfect for every day. The skin tint from Hourglass. I like it. I'm not going to tell you I am over the moon obsessed with it at this point. I Obviously, this is first impression. I am going to wear this makeup today. I'm not going to come back and do a check-in. I'm not going to have time to do that today. But I am going to keep this makeup on all day. And I will, I will make sure, I promise, to write extensive notes in the description of what I think by the end of the day. Because they do claim this is a long-wearing skin tint. So... We will see. I did not use primer today. I did use some powder, like you saw. I used a little bit of the Kosas powder. I did not set under my eyes, though. Um, so we'll talk about the concealer in a minute. But the Hourglass Skin Tint is pretty. I think there is definitely going to be a group of people that love this. I'm assuming, and this may change, so look in the description box, but I am assuming if you have oily skin, I'm not sure. This is going to be the one for you. I think not that you need a matte skin tint if you have oily skin, but I don't know. Unless you pair this with something that's mattifying underneath, I feel like if you have oily skin, this might not be your favorite thing. I don't know about the wear yet, but just based on how hydrating it looks on your skin, I don't know if you have super oily skin, if that's going to be something that you like. But does it look very skin-like? Yes. Does it look just like your natural skin? Yes. It is very undetectable on your skin. So if that's what you're looking for, you might really like this. If you are looking for coverage, this is not going to be the one for you. As you saw, it is barely a light coverage. I mean, it's just a very sheer wash of color. The concealer, all right. The concealer, I will say, now that it's 
been sitting on my under eyes for a while. It looks nice. It is not creasing. I mean, it, it really looks nice. I don't love this color, as I said earlier, so I might end up exchanging this for the 1.5 shade, which is what I wanted initially. But I will say, I am impressed with how it is sitting under my eyes because I did not powder and I have not touched my under eyes since I applied it. So I feel like it's sitting really nicely. Now, I do not agree. It is not a medium coverage in my opinion. I think this is a solid light medium at the most and that's if I have a color corrector on this eye. So I think without corrector on me, this is gonna be a light coverage concealer. So I'm not quite sure where they're getting the medium coverage because I feel like even if you don't have a ton to cover this is a very thin sheer concealer and you can tell if you just swatch it and look at the formula I mean you can almost kind of see through it so I don't think this is medium coverage in my opinion I also don't think it's blurring which it says in the name it says undetectable and blurring I do agree with the undetectable part I don't agree with the blurring part I don't really see any blurring aspects to it at all I think if I had a shade a little bit better, it might bump this one up just a little bit for me. I would agree with the fact that, that it's a natural finish. I don't think it looks super matte and I don't think it looks super dewy or radiant. I think it's kind of in between. So I do agree with that. I just don't really agree with the coverage level and I don't agree that it blurs. The last thing, the Give Blush. Okay, I wanna try that with different base products. So that will be coming after I've tried it for a little while. I will update you in a speed reviews video in the future, but I feel like I didn't absolutely love the application on it. I feel like it went on a little bit, um, just a little bit patchy, I guess is what I would say. But I also am wondering if that has something to do with what I have on underneath. So to be determined on that. I think the color is beautiful and they swatch beautifully. I mean, the formulas feel really nice. So I'm wondering if it's my base today that I don't love them with, but the color is pretty. I will let you know after I've tried it for a little bit longer. Thank you so much for watching. I will have all the products listed and linked below for you. They are affiliate links, so I do make a commission if you shop through them. Make sure to subscribe if you have not already. Follow me on Instagram at simply.blair and TikTok simply.blair1. Make sure to check out the description box for any updates on the wear of these products. And I will see you next time for another video. Remember, simply be you. Bye.